So thank you, thank you very much again. Uh, uh, the, the, the topic of my talk today is, uh, of course, uh, Almetrics. But what I would like to have with you is a, a discussion more about uh, the concept of Almetrics, uh, particularly uh, about the, the, the knowledge that we have, that we have acquired around, uh, around Almetrics, and also to have some possible discussions on what are the possibilities, the practical possibilities of Almetrics with, uh, with different purposes. So just a brief uh, outline of, uh, of my presentation, and I will uh, start with, uh, uh, yeah. Oops, sorry. with uh, an introduction to, uh, to Almetrics. Then uh, I will discuss the, the, the recent knowledge that we have about this, uh, this topic. I will discuss with you some of the challenges and, and uh, main conceptual aspects, and uh, I also like to discuss the, the, perhaps some opportunities for, for Almetrics, for some practical opportunities. Okay, so. Perhaps instead of what is Almetrics, we should ask why Almetrics? So what, what's the reason why Almetrics have, uh, have emerged? Perhaps uh, to answer this question, we have to give a step back and, and, and focus on a, a perhaps even more important question that basically everybody wants to answer. That is, what is the impact of my publications? So what is the quality, what is the scientific impact, the societal impact, etc.? To, to answer that question, we counted with basically two main approaches. On the one hand, uh, uh, the peer review system, basically experts uh, that would read a paper and, and say, uh, give comments about, uh, uh, about the content of the paper, qualitative comments. And on the other hand, we have uh, citation analysis and, and bibliometrics. We know that both approaches have limitations. So peer review can be biased, uh, can be personal preferences of the, of the, of the reviews, etc. And citations are also not, not perfect. So there are citations that are given for non-very scientific reasons. Uh, not all citations are, are, are really equal. Or not, all, not all are given for scientific uh, uh, yeah, arguments, uh, etc. So that's, that's somehow uh, uh, well. Uh, so in this in this context of, of the imperfection of uh, all these uh, uh, of these two approaches, then uh, appear the, the, the concept of uh, of Falmetrics. And uh, the, the funny thing is that we don't have a clear definition of Almetrics. So the Almetrics were, were somehow proposed in the, in the Almetrics Manifesto in, in 2010, but uh, there was no clear, uh, a clear expression of what is exactly Almetrics. And, and this is something we'll, we'll discuss a little bit more later. As, as it was mentioned also today, uh, Almetrics uh, are often seen as article level metrics, but I would say that citations are also article level metrics, so it's something not exclusive of uh, uh, of metrics. In essence, so if we would like to give it a, a kind of general definition, we would say that Almetrics refer to mentions of uh, scientific publications or scientific outputs in uh, social media sources, social media tools like Twitter, Facebook, uh, uh, blogs, etc., or also kind of crowdsourced tools like uh, Mendeley or, or Sotero. But what else do, do, do we do we need to know about, about our metrics? Uh, as I said, it's, it's, as some colleagues have said, it's, it's a bad term. So some colleagues said that it's a good idea, but a bad name. Uh, the reason why it's a bad name is because it's a kind of umbrella, uh, umbrella term. Uh, it, it, it concentrates, so, so it, it refers to many different things, to, to blogs, to tweets, to pre and post uh, 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 reviews, uh, also to policy mentions, to downloads and views. Uh, sometimes, so it actually, actually, it's a term that that refers to many and and, and quite different things. So that's why uh, other terms have also uh, popped up, like uh, social media metrics, uh, influmetrics, uh, etc. And uh, what we are starting to agree more and more is that probably we will need uh, more specific terms for the different metrics. As Isidro mentioned this morning, maybe Twitter metrics. Facebook metrics, maybe these are two fancy terms, but probably we go more into that direction than, than simply having one, one term. That it, it, might, it might stay as, as a kind of uh, popular term to, to know that we refer to basically everything that is not citations, but uh, probably, probably in the future we will face more, more uh, specific terms for, for the different metrics. And of course, an open question regarding these metrics is if they have, uh, if they really provide possibilities for capturing societal impact, the, the, the societal uh, impact of, of scientific publications. Uh, 
And I leave it this as, as an open question because this is still something that, that we're trying to, to, to grasp. So, so up to here, more or less, what, what uh, is cell metrics? So what, what, uh, yeah, what's, what's the main concept and, and, and some of the, uh, of the problems around the concept? But what, what do we know about, uh, about cell metrics? Uh, in the first place, we have to acknowledge that there's a new uh, emerging uh, uh, research line within, within the, 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 the field of, uh, of uh, bibliometrics. So uh, we have that scientists from all over the world, from uh, different institutions, have started to, to look at this, at this topic. And uh, if we would summarize somehow the main topics that have been discussed, we could say that uh, they have been uh, around coverage, about the correlations between uh, L metrics and, and particularly citations, but also correlations with other bibliographic elements. Also, uh, an important body of, of uh, research goes to, to the analysis of data problems and data inconsistencies regarding L metrics. And finally, of course, also conceptual discussions on, on, on their meaning, on their value, so all these type of, of discussions. So let, let me start with some of the, uh, of the main results. Let's start with the coverage. So uh, one thing that we can say about Almetrics is that they are increasing over time. So this is based on, on data from Almetrics.com, and we can see how in the most recent years, the percentage of publications that have some Almetric activity has, has increased, particularly considering that Almetrics.com started in 2000, 2011. So that may be also the, the, yeah, the explanation why is this, uh, why is this increase. Uh, even so, although there is this, this important increase in the number of, of publications, we have to be aware that still the coverage is around 25, yeah, over 25 percentage, 20 percentage. That's, that's more or less the coverage of publications that we can expect, at least in Almetric.com. Mendeley, for example, is a different, is a different story. The, the coverage in Mendeley is much higher. It can be uh, over 70 percentage or sometimes even 80 percentage, depending on, on the field. But, okay, so this is the first message. So uh, the, the presence of Almetrics in publications is increasing uh, over time. Uh, when we look at the, at the sources that provide this, uh, these metrics, then we can see how, uh, for example, for this 20 percentage of publications that have some uh, Almetric activity in Almetric.com, we can see how Twitter is the most important source providing some uh, impact uh, evidence. Then we have other, other smaller sources like Facebook, like blogs, like F1000, uh, news mentions, uh, Reddit, etc. So then a second, a second message. When we look at the metrics, and, and we don't refer to Mendeley, normally we are talking about Twitter. That, that would be a second uh, important message. So let's, let's have a discussion now about uh, the coverage by fields. So in the graph on, uh, on the top, we have the distributions of uh, citations. So the density map of citations across, well, in, in a map of science. And then we can see how citations concentrate around the, the, the biomedical fields, the natural sciences, chemistry, physics, material sciences. So these are the fields with the highest uh, uh, density of, of citations. So the, the, the map on the top shouldn't, shouldn't impress anybody. It's, it's what we know about citation distributions. The map about Mendeley is a bit, uh, it was surprising uh, because in the first place, it resembles quite a lot uh, the map of uh, citations. So it seems that Mendeley has a, a similar distribution. But it's also true that we see more fields illuminated in the map. So, they ha so Mendeley readers have, uh, have a much broader spread uh, across the scientific uh, uh, map. If we look at Twitter, the interesting thing of Twitter is that we see an inverse pattern compared to the other uh, two maps. So if with citations and Mendeley, we would have a higher presence, a higher density of metrics on the right-hand side of the map. So that means physics, chemistry, the natural sciences. Twitter is, the, is somehow the other way around. So we see uh, the more uh, medicine general, uh, the more psychology, social sciences fields that have higher densities of, uh, of tweets. That could also uh, support, give some support to the idea that indeed Twitter is more interested in the social issues of uh, uh, the social topics of science. When we look at the smaller, at the smaller uh, uh, metrics like blogs or news media, then this is the normal map that we get. So a strong concentration around the multidisciplinary science journals. In other words, 
These metrics tend to concentrate around nature, science, PENAS, etc. So the, the, the multidisciplinary uh, papers. So it's also something to, to keep in mind if we are working with, with blocks, for example. Okay, uh, when we talk about the correlations with, uh, with citations, then uh, in the case of, of Mendeley, uh, we find moderate correlations. And uh, interesting is also that we have found a good filtering of highly cited publications. So if we look at the most uh, read papers in Mendeley, we will likely find also highly cited papers. In the case of, of the other, say the smaller uh, unmetric sources like Twitter or blogs, then we see that, that the, the, the very highly tweeted papers many times are also highly cited papers, but they also miss a lot of highly cited papers. So in a way, they, they, uh, Twitter has a, a, a high precision in terms of identifying highly cited papers, but a low recall. So many, many highly cited papers would be uh, uh, missed if we would focus on, on Twitter accounts to, to detect them. We have also found uh, low correlations with uh, other bibliographic elements like uh, number of pages, the length of, length of the titles, the, the number of authors. So these are, these are, these are elements that uh, have some relationships sometimes with citations. The relationship with all metrics is, is different. It's, it's not as, as, as with citations. But the main, the main uh, message here is probably that, that uh, so this, this lack of correlation between citations and, and all metrics is that they are essentially different. So we are measuring different things. And that's why we claim that uh, we cannot really use our metrics to uh, substitute citations. In a way, they, they represent two, two different dimensions, two different worlds. OK, another, another important element is uh, the, the inconsistencies in the data. So we did an analysis with uh, 1,000 random publications from uh, PLOS One. And we search for them in different platforms, in, in, in PLOS, in Almetric.com, also in Mendeley for Mendeley readers. Uh, we look at Twitter and Facebook uh, as well. And then we found differences in the counts. For example, we found differences that we couldn't always explain, like sometimes higher, higher number of, uh, uh, so for example, uh, decreased number of, uh, of uh, Mendeley readers. Or, or simply why, why Facebook, the Facebook count in PLOS and, and metric.com are so different. So explanations can be that PLOS counts uh, uh, actions around Facebook, like likes and shares, while metric.com is just counting the posts hmm, that, that someone has posted a, a, a paper. But so that's also an important, an important uh, element to, ke to keep in mind when working with metrics that there may be differences, important differences sometimes, uh, depending where I collect the data. And then, of course, we have the funny things. So here we have a paper that starts with a question. It has received more than 5,000 tweets. And, of course, we have to be creative also in our abstracts. And then when you can get, when you can get a high visibility in Twitter. So this is, this is an example of what can happen in, in, uh, in Almetrics. Another example, this papers have received almost 7,000 tweets. I would say that the title is quite okay. I don't find anything, or also the abstract is, is okay. Does anybody know this paper? Have you heard about this case? <laughs> so basically, this paper made it to the final version of the paper, to the published version, with this string in the text. Some people call it a, a, a real citation, an honest citation. So this opened a huge discussion in Twitter, in blogs, in, in news. So we can see it in the, in the scores. I, I was thinking with uh, the, the, the talk of Jean-Claude this morning. This is an effect of openness. So that means that uh, now our, our success is, is visible, but also our mistakes. And yeah, that's, that's uh, so I wouldn't say that this is a bad, a bad thing of Almetrics. Actually, I would say it's good. It helps us to find uh, weird situations in science. But of course, I wouldn't say that this paper has a high quality because it has a lot of tweets because of this. That's what we need to keep in mind. Okay, and then we have, of course, uh, other problems like uh, um, 
Uh, inconsistency is also within the same platform. So sometimes when you count Mendeley readers, you find differences that, again, are not uh, explainable. So for example, sometimes people have less uh, Mendeley readerships in two different counts, and, and, and the second count has less uh, readerships. We don't really know why is that. Uh, it might be because people delete their papers in Mendeley. It may be that, that Mendeley found that a paper was actually a combination of two papers, and they split them. So we, we don't know. Um, we, we have, of course, the problem of duplicates, so papers that are mentioned, uh, in, uh, so that have several versions of the same paper, in, in, both in Almetric.com and in Mendeley and in other sources, uh, metadata errors, noise, so all these, all these are, are problems in, in, in Almetrics. Also, uh, some colleagues have found an important, or at least a relevant, presence of, uh, of uh, cyborgs and bots, so automated accounts that, that uh, provide uh, tweets uh, or, 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 other, or other types of mentions. We have to be aware, of course, also of the biases, uh, geographic biases, language biases, and also technical biases. So, for example, the, the strong dependence on, on DOIs to, uh, to, to have uh, uh, robust counts on, on, on all these metrics. So, and, and this, for example, affects uh, the humanities. Because in humanities, you don't find that many DOIs in the natural sciences or the biomedical sciences. A note apart, I would give it for Mendeley. So it's, it's uh, probably the strongest almet uh, almetric source. That's why I had this discussion with, with Isidro, if it's almetrics or, or bibliometrics. I would say that it's almetrics, uh, because uh, uh, in the end, uh, citations are, are produced are, 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 yeah, are given in, in a completely different context as, uh, as readerships. So it's, 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 a complete, it's, it's a relatively different uh, uh, type of, of action among scholars. Although, of course, they are not completely uh, separate. They are not completely different. But uh, yeah, I think, I think that we can still qualify Mendeley as Almetrics. Uh, another thing that we have to highlight about, uh, about Mendeley is the, the high coverage of, uh, of publications. As I said, it can be a coverage of, of higher than 70 percentage of, of uh, publications that are somehow uh, mentioned, included in, in, in Mendeley, so read in Mendeley. Uh, this moderate correlation with, uh, with citations, uh, this good filtering of highly cited publications, and also something very interesting is the possibility of modeling types of impact based on the type of users in Mendeley. So when, when uh, any person opens an account in Mendeley, that person has to indicate the, 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 the country and also the, the, the academic status. So it can be a professor, it can be a PhD, but it can be also students and sometimes non-academic researchers. And that could give us the opportunity to look also at what non-scholars are doing with publications. So which publications are being captured among uh, users that are non from universities or from uh, research organizations. So, and what, what are then the, the challenges? So, we have discussed several elements, several things that we, we need to discuss, we need to, to, uh, to understand better, and perhaps, uh, so, an important one is, of course, the conceptualization and the need of, of uh, theoretical frameworks. So, here we have started to do some work, and we are starting to discuss uh, uh, theories like the concept symbol, uh, other social theories, and also partially citation theories could have some uh, support, uh, some help in order to understand and, 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 and discuss uh, and metrics. We also need to work on the standardization of the data and, and the standardization of the, of the different tools. Uh, I would say that the problem of data quality is, is very important and also when we construct indicators based on metrics, we need to be aware of them. So problems like the outliers that I just mentioned need to be, need to be uh, uh, considered. Uh, the problems of the biases, the robustness, the reliability, that we don't get completely uh, different uh, metrics uh, a week after uh, your first measurement. We also have the risk of the uh, potential trivialization uh, of these uh, metrics if they are just used for, say, a researcher looking at himself or a group of researchers just commenting their uh, Twitter H index. So that, that, that would be simply a, a trivialization of, of maybe an interesting, an interesting tool. 
uh, yeah, the problem of manipulability, of course, it's very easy to buy uh, tweets and, and, and Facebook uh, uh, likes. So it costs, I think, $50, $50 just uh, a bunch of them. Uh, the problem of normalization, like we have with citations, we have seen differences across fields. So probably we need the same for, for all metrics to be able to compare, let's say, the number of Mendeley readers in chemistry with the number of Mendeley readers in, in, in social sciences. And we also need to work on the proper production and use of, this, of these new metrics, having kind of, of uh, proper, proper uses or, or good uses of, of our metrics. OK, but what are then the, the opportunities? Because there are opportunities. Uh, regarding Mendeley, I would say it's probably the most promising tool in terms of indicators, in terms of, of, of creating new, new indicators. So there are, for example, some colleagues that have started to look already at the normalization of Mendeley readers and so on. For the other metrics, Twitter, blogs, I would say that we are not yet there. So, so there are many things that, that we need to take into account. And in the end, maybe the, the final result is not that we have a, an indicator, just the number of tweets. But we, ref, we, we could refine that indicator much better. So the number of tweets given by a, a group of users that we consider relevant for a specific uh, stakeholder, a specific unit. I would say that this, uh, all these tools, so one of the things that I like of, of uh, uh, Alessandro's uh, uh, talk was that he mentioned the, the, the importance of the, uh, of the wealth of data. So it's not only that I look at the number of tweets, I also look at who is tweeting me, and I can also look at what the, the Twitter is saying about me. We can all use this information. We can look at the tweet, we can look at the hashtags used, we can use at, at what, what are they saying about the paper. It's, it's, it's about the content, it's about a formal thing. So we can characterize or, or elaborate uh, more, more, more advanced indicators considering all this extra information. So what I say is that we could model types of impact, okay, like maybe public attention, social impact, uh, also public understanding of science, also public misunderstanding of science. So for example, if people are tweeting, saying good things about a bad paper, if that is something that we can capture, I think it's, it's a plus. Uh, of course, other possibilities include identification of blogs, hashtags, twitters, news media, etc., so that we can find uh, uh, yeah, blogs that we can follow for my work, for my, for my, stu uh, for my studies. Uh, it's also interesting the fact that we can inform scientists and policymakers about communities of attention. So we can find, uh, for example, in a given topic, who are the most important uh, journalists, who are the most important newspapers, uh, who are the most important Twitter users. And uh, this morning was mentioned several times, so crowdfunding, crowdsourcing of science can also benefit from all these indicators in terms of finding these this, uh, this communities, finding uh, disciplines or, or, or sub-disciplines that have a strong social uh, attraction. So that's also something that, that could be, uh, that could be uh, supported through uh, metrics. So I think I'm, uh, I'm running out of time, but I would like to show you a slide uh, that I made for this conference, so it's not published. So these are the uh, Twitter brokers of science. So these are the, uh, as in Almetric.com. So these are the most important users. It's a pity that you cannot see the links, uh, but it's, it's a relatively well-connected uh, network. And we can find kind of clusters of the most, so these are the most important and it's in the overall. And we can find some clusters and also some interesting uh, cases. So for example, this is mathematics papers that has tweeted <laughs> a lot uh, about mathematics. But the fact that it's only following three uh, users suggest that this is probably a bot. This is not, 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 a, non -real, uh, not a real account. But then we have others like black physicists or health literature that uh, have followers. They also follow others and that they discuss uh, literature, maybe in physics, in health, that, uh, that yeah, can, be of, can be of interest. And, but, and this is a way of finding communities of, of attention around, uh, around scientific publications. And yeah, this is, this is my last slide. <laughs> Great, thank you very much. There's time for questions.
thank you. That was very interesting. Um, what do you see as um, promising new business models in uh, impact metrics and delivering uh, indicators? I'm, you, you pointed out that this um, kind of uh, giving information about one research object is now something like a standard case, but you as well pointed out that this aggregate data gives important hints to scientists, policymakers, and so on. Is there a possible business model in that? Will we see more of that in the future that we have prov um, provision of um, yeah, huge aggregated data sets? Well, I'm, I'm a scientist, so I'm supposed not to know anything about business. But uh, I, would say, I would say that, for example, yeah, uh, one, one, one point of development is, uh, way of development is, is indeed data mining. I think that there are a lot of possibilities in mining all this data. Um, so, yeah, discovering communities of attention, discovering the perception of science in, in these communities, what they are saying. Uh, so, uh, say strategic, strategic information. Also, for example, finding uh, topics, uh, maybe not, not main disciplines, but specific topics that are relevant for, for, for uh, Twitter users, for news uh, for, uh, journalists. So, this is also something that we can, that we can do. Um, yeah, if we, move to, if we move to Mendeley, then we could uh, elaborate more uh, advanced indicators, like not only the number of readerships, but also the number of readerships by non-academic users or by some specific group of, of users. So also in the, in the indicator side, there are, there, are, there are possibilities. But my main impression is that, uh, or my, my preference, if you will, it would be more in, in the data mining side, in, in extracting new knowledge uh, from all this wealth of data. Thank you very much um, for your talk. Um, it's very interesting to give a, or to get a coherent picture on the alt metrics movement, and it's said that it's like a second revolution in um, um, central metrics as well. Um, the whole issue of alt metrics will change um, the research on citation networks and so on. And um, my question is. Um, one research field is, as you said, the correlations between traditional citations and alt metrics, and um, there's not yet any idea what the difference means exactly. There is an empirical difference, and um, it's um, yeah, conceptualized as a complement um, to citation um, um, numbers. So I was wondering how far are the um, conceptual discussions um, on it, um, because that is for me um, the most interesting point um, to um, discuss on the question of public attention versus social impact versus research impact. What is the whole um, yeah, hype about? Hmm? Yeah. Uh, thank you. It's a very nice, a very good question. We have started to do some uh, uh, discussion on the, on the more theoretical and conceptual side. So, for example, something we have done is discuss the, the theories that, uh, that are applied for citations in this case, for all metrics. And for example, two theories that, that we have discussed in citation is the normative theory. So the normative theory basically says that uh, wh wh the reasons why we cite is because we have some norms that uh, Merton named as, as the ethos of science, like communism, universalism, uh, yeah, all these all this norms. But, but the, so the whole idea is that uh, uh, we understand citations because we understand the norms that, are, that surround them. That why, why people give, uh, give these citations. Of course, there is the, the other theory, the social constructivist, that says, no, all these theories, uh, all, all these norms may or not maybe apply, and people just cite for, uh, in this process of negotiation of the publications to be published, etc., they cite whatever is necessary. So both, both are probably right, but what more or less point is that 
So the mechanisms to give citations are different to those that uh, come from Almetrics. Because in Almetrics, the norms why people tweet are much different compared to the norms why, why uh, uh, peoples are, are, uh, pe uh, uh, papers are cited. So, for example, a highly, a highly tweeted paper is a, fun, is, a, is a paper with a funny abstract. You wouldn't cite a paper just for a funny abstract. You would cite it for, for, a, a, yeah, for a reason, for one of these norms. But you wouldn't cite it say, well, I'm going to cite this paper because it's funny. Some, some, some referee at some point would point, yeah, this, this, this citation is maybe not good. So th this, is, this is more or less what, what we start to understand, that, that all metrics are fundamentally different compared to, to uh, citations. That they, the, the, the norms behind them are, are different. <laughs>